Hi. I'm going to do a summary of the Asian session. Let's roll the intro. I'll tell you all about it. Hi. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Langers and I am the overgrown child that is the scruffy trader. And what I'm trying to do is kind of put trading in the real world without sort of showing you vomit inducing green Lamborghinis. You ding dong! Give it to me again. You ding dong! Ugh, make it stop! Sorry, just the telegram guys have been winding me up. Merc's Jags with a view to get a Range Rover. Only ones allowed, boys. Only ones allowed. Sorry. But if that sounds good, please click the subscribe button and do me a favour and hit the like button, it genuinely helps. So what have I been doing? Well, all of this week I've been trading the Asian session, starting around 11 o'clock my time in the UK and trading through the night or till I've hit a, a profit level that I wished. And why have I done it? Well, it was simply because I connect with a number of guys on the other side of the planet and as I'm going to bed, they're waking up. And I thought it'd be nice to see what they see, but also talk to them in real time, which I, I did. Thanks, Yoxie. You genuinely kept me awake. And I will put one of the, your points on the whiteboard because uh, it genuinely helped me. But more on that later. So first of all, before I jump on the whiteboard, let us have a quick look at how I've ended the week. And then I'll go on the board and I'll give you kind of an overview of what I found and something for you to look out for as you trade the Asian session, if that's what you want to do. So come with me. Let me jump on my spreadsheet and I'll show you my findings. OK, guys, um, as I was saying, this is the state of play for the week. The week is now finished. Uh, we've ended OK. Uh, could have been better could have been a lot worse but overall I, I ended up taking 25 positions I had a 64% hit rate which could be better uh, but as long as it's over 60% I'm happy it gave me an average pip count of 7.8 but bear in mind it's an average so it takes into account the losses as well so again it, it's okay and an average win of 36 pounds okay and these are the trades that I took and what you'll find is there was a lot of little wins and some whopping big ones and the big ones paid off the little ones and that was one of the epiphanies that I found and I'm going to touch on that on the whiteboard but I also set up uh, a reasonable set of rules a framework if you like to work within and I implore you to do this whether it's just wrote on the back of a, a beer mat or even on spreadsheets like what I do I have them in front of me so I know what I'm looking at and those rules were quite simple because I was trading the Asian session to keep it fair I wasn't going to post any trade on it so it was after 11 o'clock at night my time uh, I live in the UK so 11 o'clock is kind of the the starting grid for the Asian Pacifics on the other side of the planet I also had a rule in which was kind of linked to two and three of no more than five pound a trade with a maximum of three open trades at risk at any one time so essentially give me a little bit of maneuvering room so i could either open up three five pound trades or i could open up one trade with five one pounds within them if i was feeling super brave I could open up two five pound positions but by definition the third one would be capped at five does that make sense and it's like a mix and match but it, it basically what it meant was that I would have no more than 15 pound as a trade running at any one time if it was at risk okay the ATR needed to be four times the spread and the reason behind that was well if the spreads are widening on a night time, which on a lot of instruments they do, 
I needed to know the market would move that far to cover the spread and pay me because if it didn't cover the spread there was no point and just very quickly um, I'll show you what an ATR is okay so if you have a chart like this you will find an ATR which stands for average true range and it's basically the range of a candle okay so if, in this instance if I'm looking at and one hour chart the ATR is set at 14 which means it would look 14 candles back and give an average of the pip movement so at the moment if you look at that the average of the last 14 candles is 18 so you can kind of expect a movement of 18 pips one way or the other within that candle so the candle range would be 18 pips okay and the reason I bring it up is because I picked up a comment from one of the viewers from Vaughan who said he struggled to find the ATR. Little salute to you Vaughan. Don't worry about not being able to find things. I'm a child of the 80s and we couldn't find the G spot. Splendid girl and so helpful. Do you know she's been showing me how to stick the pole up? Actually in my house the G spot by Winky is where I sit on the couch when she calls me Gary. That's my first name for those who don't know. Uh, that's like getting your full treatment off your mother when you're in trouble. When they run through the entire name of the family before they get to yours because they're so mad. I didn't mind so much being called sort of Andrew Stewart and Neville. It was when I was called Deborah, I had a real problem. You know, but then again, it might have been a day when I'm having a finny. Matron, take them away. Oh. Sorry, that's a little in joke to the telegram guys. And yes, Paul, you know what I'm talking about when you're wanting to break free. Oh, hello. Sorry. <laughs> uh, dear. I might drop a little snippet on the end of the. No, I won't. I won't embarrass you, son. I won't embarrass you. But in the live feed tomorrow, I definitely will. I'll guarantee you I will. So, sorry. And the last rule was five pip target. And why a five pip target? Well, the reason behind that was because the market is pretty thin and the movements are pretty thin. I wanted to pick something that was reasonable to get some profit out of. And I thought at five pound a pop, five pips, 25 quid sitting for an hour. Mm, it's not the best, but I can live with that so that's why i set it at five and that was it so they, they were kind of the rules and the idea and the, what i did um it was tough it was tough uh, but let me jump on the whiteboard and i'll kind of give you my thoughts and something to look at if you are to trade the asian session okay so what have i actually found doing this well I kind of figured out that what prevails in the middle of the night when you're working in a quiet house is bad music rules and if you don't know find taco putting on the Ritz and you'll figure that out because I had a little bit of a thing where I was trying to keep myself awake and you'll understand why in just a second and Yoxie from the Telegram group plus a couple of the others kept on banging in some ridiculously bad music so I thought I'd only cheer along. Matron, take them away. But did that help me trade? Funny enough, it did. Because the market is incredibly slow. And I put a question mark against that. And how did it help? Because it was slow. You become bored and when you're bored you have a tendency to get your little finger want to try and catch the moves because what happens is you dial down your expectations so much a trade that would really be substandard at any time of the day suddenly becomes attractive because you've actually dialed your eyes 
into watching this very slow movement. So if you see a movement of a couple of ticks, suddenly you think that big couple of tick move is massive, when in reality it's nothing. So the bad music was there first, really to stop you from clicking the button, just out of boredom. So what I inevitably was doing was, I was watching three or four videos, then looking at the charts, watching three or four videos, looking at the charts and amusing myself to allow a 15 minute and a 30 minute candle to close. And believe it or not, it really helped me, you know. And I know it sounds silly, but just because you're in front of the screen does not mean to say you have to be clicking the button. Pressing the button to enter or exit is the easy part. The hard part is all the homework that goes into placing your trade in the first place. And what I found with the Asian session is you are waiting forever. You know, one of the nights this week, I sat all night and nothing materialized. And the reason being, it didn't click my criteria. Now, if I did this again, I would look at it in a different framework because I initially went into it with my own set of rules that I would normally trade say on cable at 10 o'clock in the morning UK time which is sort of a buoyant time of the, the day for the London session. Those rules do not apply to the Asian session and I figured that out pretty much later on in the week because the part three which I'll get onto in a second came into play quite a bit. So why did I put a question mark against slow? Because every single market that I looked at was slow. That they, if they were doing 50 pips in my normal time, they were doing 15 to 20 in the Asian. And it was really difficult, bar one. And it was the Nikkei, or what you'll find on more CFD or spread back brokers called the Jap 225 or the Japan. 225. So the Jap 225 was the only one that moved aggressively. Now it might have just been this week. I would need to back test it and, and figure it out. But when, when I have looked at it in the past, it does move quite well. And when it shifts, it's a, it's a little bit of a, a demon. In the sense, if it moves badly against you, it really is. It's almost sort of the Asian Pacific version of the DAX or the Dow, because they are the same. When it starts to move, you know about it if you're on the wrong side of it. Which kind of takes me into the third part, which is the market genuinely trends. And that includes the Nikkei, because it did trend as well. Fortunately, though, because of the moves, if you get caught on the wrong side of it, you can manage your way out of it on the retracements. A little bit like the DAX, you know, because the DAX does rotate back quite a, fit, quite a way that you can, if not get out of your trade, certainly reduce the damage that it's about to give you. So where does the trending part come into it? Well, it's kind of like a micro trend. And um, what I kind of figured out and again, it's just what I saw this week. I would need to look at this in greater detail, but some of the findings. That it has a singularity movement. And what I mean by that is, it seems to go in a single direction for the whole session. You see, on the London session, it'll move one way, get about two, three o'clock, and it'll rotate back, almost coming back to the mean. So it's got something to do with the VWAP. You'll often see if you have a VWAP on your chart, the market will move up quite away from it. It'll come back to the VWAP, go through the VWAP, and almost go the same distance the other side and then come back. It's kind of a mean reversion. Um, that doesn't really happen on the Asian Pacific. It just seemed to be a singularity. Here, quickly, I'll show you. Okay guys, so I'll kind of try and put into context what I was trying to say. Now, what I've pulled up is just a random chart but has both the Asian Pacifics in it, i.e. 
Australia and Japan. Okay. And if I scroll this through, um, there's nothing overly exciting about it. It's just a normal hourly chart. However, if I take a sample of data from what I traded uh, from say 11 o'clock to, oh, oh, got a visitor. There you oh. go. Let's hope it hits the spot. Oh, I'll be hitting your spot, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Maybe as I found it. <laughs> Right, sorry, uh, almost lost my train of thought there. So, what was I saying? If I took a sample of data from 11 at night to around 7, 8 o'clock the next morning, that's pretty much the Asian session. I think we'd all agree with that. So let's have a little look. So if I draw a line, uh, just kind of there. So it's between the seven and eight o'clock and another line starting at 11 o'clock that is there you can see it's in a single direction now that could be a fluke because it's just one day however just look at this let me make sure that's about as singularity as it gets so let's see if what happened the day before? So again, find seven to eight o'clock. Look at around 11 o'clock, which is it. Oh, look. Now this is going in the opposite direction, but it's in a single direction. It's spooky really, isn't it? And I'll do it again. Oh, sounds like there's been a bit of a clatter in the kitchen. Never mind. Never married her for her cooking skills. Seven and eight. Cross to 11 o'clock, which is there. Now this one's a little bit of a, a loop-de-loop, -loop, if you like. But if you look at the major trend, it went down to there. Now that's the eight o'clock candle and it's still there. So it's still majorly down. It did return there, yes, but nothing is perfect guys. Remember, nothing is perfect. This is just a, a general idea. But if you were trading that and you had it on a short, you would have still made money and got out of it before the next session proper kicked off. So this is Tuesday, so that will be there. Put the, the vertical line in on the 11 o'clock. And what do you know? Pretty much a single direction. And then we go on to the last one, which is Monday. Uh, where are we at? So it's from there. Whoops. Sort of there to there and that's about a single direction as well there you go so that's what I mean by a singularity it's not ranging a lot once it gets moving it just keeps on going so it's almost like a trend just for that session rather than what you would do in a swing trade where you're looking to ride a trend for multiple days or weeks sort of thing. So I hope that kind of makes sense. So I'll enjoy my coffee. And have a little moment. Hello. <laughs> because we all know Scruffy likes a coffee. And I'll get myself back on the whiteboard. So that's kind of what I was driving at. There are wobbles within it because nothing is perfect. The markets are not perfect. You know, you have to look at your constants. And that's kind of the epiphany that I had. And I'll show you what I mean. So in trading, regardless of what anybody tells you, there's only a couple of constants within it. Right? And one of the major constants 
which will always be there and it doesn't matter what you're doing. And I have watched some bozos on YouTube trying to say, oh, if you do sort of like 17 moving average, um, it's so much better than 20. It's bollocks, you know, because if you line them next to each other, they're almost identical. And anything under an hour isn't really giving you any signals at all. Under an hour is just entry and exit and monitoring. Your trade idea always comes from higher above. So that's where your support and resistance lines come from. They're pretty much always high time frames if you want a solid support and resistance. So I'll, I'll give you an idea of what I mean by a constant. So you have a solid support and resistance area. All right, and what do I mean by that? You've drawn two lines in and the price is working between them. All right. So at this moment in time, you have two constants on the chart. All right. You already have a 50% system. And I know you're going to look at me, scratch your head and go, how on earth is that a 50% system? Well, it's very simple. You, it's going to hit one of those two. All right. That's 50%. Simple as that. Your trick as a trader is to figure out which one it's going to hit. Now, obviously, if it hits this one, you're not going to get paid as much. But if it goes up there, you're going to get paid quite a bit. And that all comes into your risk reward and what you're willing to lose against what you're willing to win. All of that sort of stuff. Okay. So how can that be put across to the Asian session? That's very simple. If you think of it this way, if the market, as I've just shown you, trends pretty much in a single direction constantly, and if you look at them, those trends start pretty much from when New York closes, but I, I showed you it from 11 o'clock from when I was looking at it. You can watch it for the first couple of hours, you know, I'll say, or even the first hour for a while, but I would say two hours, just to get a gauge of what's going on. And a single moving average. You see, I put onto the chart for the last one one of my trend following ideas. So, you know, I, I have a couple. Uh, the guys in the Telegram will know what they are. It's the river and the whip. But to give a, an idea for this exercise, one of the most basic of basic trend following strategies is a moving average. So if you can imagine, you have a moving average going up like so. And it could be anything, a 20, a 50, a 200. But let's just say uh, a 50 for argument's sake. So that is a 50 MA. Why a 50? Based on an hour's chart, 50 MA is pretty strong. And whichever side of the price is on at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, I would suggest letting it run a little bit and see. First tag of that line, you enter, and I bet you watch it go like that. All the way up to the support and resistance line. And it's as simple as that. You know, and it don't get any simpler. All you've look all you're figuring out is you are between two support and resistance areas, two constants. You can see a moving average, and as long as that price is above that moving average, that's your direction. And if it was going the other way, obviously, if it's below it. And your entry point can be as simple as a tag. Now, there's plenty of other different ways to enter. You could use an engulfing candle, pin bar, uh, pull back to an eight, EMA, RSI. Um, oversold, overbought condition, a cross on a MACD, anything. But all you've done is you've used the moving average as a barometer of direction because you know this market is going to be in a single movement. Hope that kind of makes sense. But that's kind of my main finding from trading the Asian session. One, it's slow. So I'm not expecting miracles from it. In other words, if I would normally go for a pit count of 30, I'd be looking for 10. 
Secondly, I figured out that it trends in a single direction. Again, I would need to back test this a little bit more, but these are the findings from this week. And a simple trend following idea is ideal for it, rather than trying to use a day trading setup. And there's none as simple for trend following than following a moving average. It really isn't. And thirdly, it's bloody boring. It really is. You are mind-numbingly bored for eight hours of the day. And that's odd because I find the charts incredibly exciting, which is why I love my job. I genuinely do. When I get up in the morning, I put the screens on and I love watching the charts move and getting involved in it because I don't care who you are, myself included. Nobody knows what's happening in the future. We're not Mystic Meg. Simple as that. And that's what makes it exciting. It's pitting your wits against the market. But well, the only thing that you need to remember is the market's always better than you. So you're always going to be the underdog. But as long as you know you're the underdog, you know how to be sneaky. And being sneaky means getting in and getting out. Simple as that. You know, Don't outstay your welcome on any market. If you can get risk-free and let something run, fine. But it is risk-free. So it doesn't cost you anything, as long as you've been paid on the way up to that break-even point. They're your bonuses. So in summary, the Asian market is slow. It is ideal for a trending environment. So use trend-following systems and plans. And hopefully, that trend will continue through the next session in a little bit of experience explosion shall we say give you that little bit of bonus but stick to support and resistance because it does respect it on a quite an uncanny familiarity it doesn't break the, the levels too much they are respected quite well so all you do is you just trend up to whichever level that you want to so I hope that all kind of makes sense it's been a good journey this week I've enjoyed it to a degree, apart from the fact I am absolutely exhausted. Didn't really sleep for five days because changing your body clock and working during the day and then working right through the night doesn't do you any good. Uh, in fact, I burst one of my stress balls, uh, as you know, and hey ho. But anyway, job done. And as always, guys, do what you love. See you all on the next one.